You're watching our live and continuing coverage of the blockbuster budget roundtable. I want to focus just for a moment as we see these images of the man of the moment, the sinister of all eyes, Arun Jaitley, India's finance minister, head into parliament where a cabinet meeting is being held at this time, which will end very shortly and immediately after that. Uh, all the ministers will be kept sequestered for a bit till the time one by one they enter parliament where Jaitley will rise at 11 o'clock to deliver his first budget. I want to focus on FDI in defence with General Mehta because that's one of the things that uh, the BJP has been speaking about which is being opposed by several top Indian corporates. Now, do you think that FDI in defence is a good thing to push through? To what extent do you think? 49%, 51%, 74%, what do you think is possible? First, uh, I, I just want to make a, a general statement that uh, since the man of the moment is also the defense yes. minister, I hope he alters that hackneyed statement. You talked about 83 budgets and the defense minister stands up and he pays tribute to the stalwarts at Siachen. He announces a figure, X thousand crores, and then thunderous applause, and then he says, as an afterthought, if more money is required, we will give it. Now, this has been happening on we 80... will not be found wanting. Uh, wanting. <laughs> 80, 80, 83 budgets, this is that statement. Now, there is, nev there is never any debate on defence. There is never any worthwhile thinking on defence. So, you know, round the table people have spoken about a statement of intent. I would hope that uh, the uh, finance minister, <coughs> who is also the defense, his, uh, the defense minister, will change that paradigm and introduce debate and discussion on defense because it, you are spending nearly 2% of your GDP on an item that is vital for your, for your defense, for your diplomacy, and for your development. The use and utility of military power... Why then power are Indian corporates opposing this, Shekhar? The, Look, <coughs> the Indian corporates, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a sexist statement in a way, uh, sort of in a, in a twisted way, but I've used it for many years. Indian corporates' approach to, uh, to, to economic reform is the same as the traditional Indian, Indian male's approach to women's liberation, that women should be liberated, but everyone else's women should be liberated, not mine. So Indian corporates have always had that view on economic reform. You see the club of the Bombay club came up and they said, if you loosen up even a little bit, in Indian industry will die. And then you heard theories from that club, uh, I can name people who gave those, those theories, that look, we must open up, but before that, we must create through our policy 50 Rahul Bajajes. Rahul Bajaj, Bajaj was yep. opposing the, uh, economic reform. Look at what has happened since then. Rahul Bajaj has competition. You know, in our own city of Delhi, uh, Hero has come up, Munjaz has come up, and I sometimes pull his leg. Unfortunately, he's not here. I, uh, we, we love to pull each other's leg. Rahul will be joining us yes. later in the well, I'm sure he's, he's hearing this and he'll come back at me, all guns blazing. But I said, look, because of reform, you've got one Punjabi family sell more scooters than you, more motorbikes than you. But in the process, has Bajaj done worse? It's done much better. It has done many new things. It's become a first class global company. So Indian companies need competition. But no corporate would ever say or no journalist would ever say that I need competition. But the fact is competition. If competition comes in, they will become less lazy. They'll become less policy and government dependent. And they'll <coughs> see less need because they will have less opportunity to be able to manipulate policy in the bhavans and corridors of Delhi. Uh, to make profits, they'll have to compete with real people. So I think corporates uh, want reform, but they want reform only to benefit themselves. Sandeep Amzai, which are the other sectors in which we can see FDI opening up? No, I think you, you will clearly see uh, rationalization of FDI across the board. You will see uh, implementation of the Arvind Mayaram Committee, which uh, is uh, well laid out in public domain. You will see strategic and non-strategic uh, routes, so 49%. 74 to 100%. But I think the key thing, if he makes that announcement in the budget, and which will be crucial, which will be that they will allow 49% in insurance, they will allow 26% with voting rights, but the CEO of that company or entity will have to be an Indian, and the majority of that board will also have to be Indian. 
So you will you will see that a capital deficit, capital starved nation will finally take some sort of baby steps to allow FDI and foreign capital into this country. And you this saw the same intent in the rail budget. You will see the same intent in the... And this time everybody budget. wants to know what's in the budget papers uh, that are lying outside Parliament House. My colleague Atir Khan is standing by. He's got the budget papers behind them. They're all wrapped up. He, of course, doesn't know uh, what's in them just yet. Only very few people do that information at this time being shared with the cabinet. Here's Atir Khan from outside Parliament House. The wait is finally over and a union budget documents 2014-15 have finally arrived here. You can see that financial bill documents have reached Parliament House and uh, the people are anxiously awaiting what is there in them for them. Uh, government has already indicated that uh, it is not going to be a populist budget. There will be some tough decisions, but we need to see whether uh, there will be uh, something for everybody in these papers or not. Uh, whether uh, there will be subsidy, where there will be tax relief, uh, what is there for consumable uh, durables, uh, automobiles. These are all the questions these uh, documents are going to answer. The finance minister has already left for his residence and he's first gone to North Block and uh, he's going to meet the president and thereafter he's going to come here and start uh, the budget speech. So clearly, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and watch and see what is there in these documents for all of us, uh, whether there will be some soaps, whether there will be tax relief. These are the big questions. What will happen to subsidies, whether there will be a revamp of social security schemes. Uh, these are the things we'll have to wait and watch uh, until the finance minister starts his speech in the parliament. With camera person Alok Bhatnagar, Atir Khan in Delhi for headlines today. Those are the budget papers and that was Atir Khan. Uh, Suman, your father presented uh, the budget and that was a budget where there was a lot of focus on fiscal responsibility which once again seems to be one of the tent poles of the economic survey, a fiscal responsibility bill with teeth. Now, what is it that the government has in mind when they say uh, they want to have fiscal responsibility bills with teeth? W what's the sense that you pick up? And do you think that's a good thing? Do you think it's possible at all? Because when things go wrong, they just open their purse strings. Yeah, I, I see. I, ultimately, any, any legislation that you pass at one point in time can always be changed at another point in time. So, this teeth thing is something that I don't fully understand. And we've seen enough examples in the past many years where uh, you know certain uh, FRBM targets have been laid down and at the first uh, sign of trouble people have sort of walked away from those uh, commitments. So I don't really see that you can uh, put down any path that is believable until you actually start walking it. And I think that is really what we'll have to see. Of course the path is important but I think we'll have to ultimately see... But do you the see if for example years, as Sandeep yeah. says Several sectors are opened up for FDI. Will that announcement itself lead to uh, FDI pouring into India? Because several foreign investors have been bitten hard, given retrospective taxation, yeah. for example. They want out or they want it out. Will they come back in just because the government's changed? No, I don't think so. I think it will be an important first step naturally because if the legislation does not allow them to come in, then the question does not even arise. But I think once the question has arisen, then I think people are going to be looking at issues like retrospective taxation. What are the government's pronouncements on that? How about ease of doing business with respect to, for example, the Land Acquisition Act, uh, labor reforms? I think people are going to be looking at all of these factors before they actually put hard dollars to work in India. So I think, you know, at some level we all pat ourselves on the back. It's, it's, we have sort of taken up this attitude that the moment we sort of push the FDI button, immediately we'll have FDI dollars coming in. I don't think it's that easy. I think there's a whole paradigm that has to be created and a whole mentality and foreign investors will take time. I don't think people are going to jump in just yet because people are still smarting from the Vodafone issue, people are still smarting from uh, some of the tax issues against Nokia. Nokia and so on and now we've had Carrefour exiting as well so the whole FDI and multiband retail is not very clear sort of again in and out sort of policy so I think people are going to wait a little bit after whatever announcements okay, come Okay let me today. ask this uh, question. Yes. Can, I, can I just add to this? Look it's one thing to say you can come and invest but where is the pipeline? It's your changes in the system of governance, economic governance, that have to create that pipeline and to also widen it. Because whatever pipeline is there is very narrow and very clogged. So for, for a foreigner to come in with his money, it's very challenging in India. And then there is a danger of what will happen later. If BJP wants to send a real message, and that's a big challenge, and I know they will not do it, it is to say that we will review our position on FDI and retail. Will they do because, it? Because in the history Can of, they do it? Because given, given the, the position they've no, taken already. In, in the history of India, no subsequent government has turned aside, has turned back, gone back on anything cleared by Indian Parliament. 
FDI in detail was cleared by Indian Parliament. It was put to vote. But Dr. Larry, the BJP has taken a tough position. The RSS is a strong view. You've got a lot of middle class traders. The R R R R RSS should not get elected. I'm sorry. But, they, the, but traders it's, it's, are the BJP's core constituency. It's, it's a BJP's problem. But I don't think we should make problem. a big deal out of FDI and retail. I mean, that's just one facet. There's a whole bunch of other things to do. Yeah. And I tell you, as an Indian doing business in India is so hard. Forget a foreigner coming in and trying to do business in India. You know, it's, it's, it's very so difficult. So I think we have to resolve a lot of these bureaucratic imped impediments, local approvals, clearances, licenses, multitude sort of things that you have to get done. And then there is a the whole environment. So, look, so make we have life to easier for the Indian corporate you will automatically make life easier. Why are we so focused on making life easier with the foreign corporate? We first start focusing on the Indian corporate, all of whom have withdrawn from the investment process over the past few years. And I think if he does that, if he starts focusing on getting the Indian corporates back into action, I think the rest will follow. Okay, I also want to introduce at this time R.C. Bhargav, uh, Chairman Maruthu Suzuki, and we've got several MPs outside Parliament as well, but I want to go across to Mr. Bhargav first, because Cars and Maruti is one of the big things that everybody's got their eyes on. Do you see, for example, Mr. Jetley making it costlier to own diesel SUVs, or do you see uh, the cost of cars coming down after the budget? No, I don't think that uh, any minor tinkering with excise duties or things going to make a difference in the longer term of the car industry. What is required, Rahul, is that. The economy has to grow, the purchasing power of people has to increase, which will make cars more affordable to people. Today, the fact that the car industry has not been going for three years is essentially because the affordability of the car has declined substantially. Costs of keeping a car in terms of fuel costs and others have gone up sharply. Incomes have not been going up. New jobs have not been created. Who is going to buy cars? And that's a real problem. I want that's to go across to Javed Ansari outside Parliament House. He's got a cross-section of MPs uh, with him. Uh, Javed, what's the sense across uh, Treasury benches, what's the sense amongst MPs on what they'd like to see uh, Mr. Jaitley actually do in this budget? Javed. Uh, I have with me Mr. Ranjeet Biswal. Mr. Pinaki Mishra just left because, uh, because of the delay. Ranjeet, you're from the Congress and obviously your, your, your inclination would be to criticize but what is your expectation what genuinely what do you believe that he can genuinely do look uh, the government of the day started uh, saying Achyadinage and now they are talking about the bitter pill so we'll see what is the Achyadin and what is the bitter pill and uh, my expectation is how they are going to handle the inflation how they are going to curb the price rise but you did a very bad job of handling all this but but, but uh, at that time they were in the opposition and they, they promised the moon and now the reality has to sip in. So what is the reality we are going to know in another two hours time. So we are looking forward for the budget. And they have got a massive mandate and people have voted for them. And they have They've got a massive mandate but an empty treasury. But, but, but they knew that. But they knew that. And they had promised the moon. So the, it is for them to handle. Talking outside and being in government are two different uh, parts. And they have to handle it now. And because the government of the day has promised dreams. And those dreams, and the, now the reality has to sip in. And what is the reality? People of India will know very soon. People of India will know very soon, but, but there are certain other realities. You know, you, will, you, will your party will just oppose things because now you are in the opposition? Or are you going to have a more constructive role? You wanted to bring a GST for one reason or the other that couldn't be rolled out. Will your state governments now be amenable to the idea of GST? Look, we are in the opposition, but we are not there to oppose everything. What is good about the government, we'll definitely support it. And what is wrong, we'll definitely point it out to the government. We are here for a constructive uh, opposition and we think we'll do whatever is good for the people of India. Specifically on GST, you'll support GST? We think we'll support. Rahul, Mr. Biswal of the Congress uh, is committing here before everybody that his party will support GST and that they'll play a constructive role. Okay, goods and services tax is something that the Congress tried very hard to bring in. Uh, they're saying they will support the government moving in the direction of goods and services tax. And that's interesting that they mention it because in the past we've seen, once they come into opposition, they find some way, uh, Dr. Virmani, of stonewalling goods and services tax. Do you think it will be rolled out with a definite timeline and how much of a difference can it make? Yeah, there'll definitely, I expect there to be a timeline. 
how quickly is not very clear right now. You know, the. Would you the, require a constitutional they, amendment to do that? No, but if you got the Congress and the True, BJP, but in any case, the BJP almost uh, has if, the majority. If the opposition quite. comes on board, then they, they can go ahead and. Uh, no, I don't think that's bring the that problem. It's, it's the states are worried about losing control of taxation and the amount of taxes they'll get in the next three years. That is a solvable problem. But you know, but when we are talking about. Uh, fiscal deficit control, how much the, the uh, Mr. Jaitley, the finance minister can kind of guarantee uh, hopefully it's not too much, hopefully it's budgetable, in which case it will happen. In fact, I Piyush Roy has just tweeted to yeah. say our government is all for GST subject to concerns of states on compensatory mechanism being addressed. But this yeah, is just it's being also a function of uh, liquor and uh, cigarettes, etc., tobacco, etc., and petroleum, because that is where the states make the maximum amount of revenue. Now the states have to come on board, so you have to have a compensatory mechanism. In the past, they've discussed a compensatory mechanism For many of, years. of close to 8,000 crores, which was to be distributed across the states, but the states still did not come on board. So it's crucial that the states first come on board. You have the constitutional amendment, and then you go, go ahead and do that. But as we've seen with VAT, it actually deepens the tax revenues. It actually deepens the tax revenues. States actually begin to benefit. Revenues go up. Uh, the ballast of revenues actually takes the states forward. So if you do go in for GST, and I think there will be some tweaking on the service tax because if they raise that to 14%, GST is 14.2%, so they'll be in sync with what they propose to do over the next six months. Today I saw date 1st July uh, 2015. It's possible. If they, if they go, go ahead with all these. And things. if we talk about states' objections, you know, then it's a cruel thing to say, but <coughs> three months from now, Karnataka Karnatak may be the only... Congress run state of any size. So BJP and its allies will have all the major states in India. But you're forgetting and, and West Bengal and others. Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu. But even in Madhya Pradesh, Raghavji is gone. Right? So, uh, because no, no, the biggest, have, biggest, biggest opposition by. came from BJP's finance minister, not from other parties. Yeah, that's true. State, oh. state revenues are the key because alcohol, liquor, and petroleum. Maximum amount of money tobacco, is tobacco liquor. tobacco, liquor, and petroleum. Maximum amount of revenues is earned. Okay, I want to states. focus, on Mr. Sikka, for a moment on the healthcare sector. Uh, how do you see, given how much of a priority healthcare was in Gujarat budgets, because that's the one thing, if you do a sampling of previous budgets in Gujarat, healthcare was Modi's big area. He wants to constantly improve healthcare. Do you think uh, he will bring that same approach from Gandhinagar to Delhi and focus on healthcare in a big way? Before talking on health care, I'll just uh, talk about what Shekhar mentioned about FDI yes. in retail. More important was FDI in defense. Uh, we had a defense company, yes. Piramal, yes. and we, we pulled out because even after making presentations to government and part acquiring an Israeli company on, on, uh, on some uh, interesting projects, we realized that there was no push from the government. In fact, there were all bottlenecks created. We even offered a pilot project to government whereby no second 2611 can ever take place. A rat could not possibly squeak in. But if you bring in a, a FDI, you will have to then cut down the white ant that we have in, in shape of DRDO. If you can save money there, you will be flushed with money. You please take an estimate of what DRDO consumes every month, every year. So year what about year. healthcare? Now come to healthcare. Uh, we have about $12 billion all odd turnover from healthcare. This can increase many fold if you bring in a policy vis-a-vis -vis R&D. We are, we are sitting on a gigantic traditional knowledge, a second patent use. China earns billions of dollars in the U.S. on second patent use. We have, uh, all we need to do is our Ayurveda traditional knowledge. Okay. We need to ensure that the toxicity, safety and efficacy studies are carried out and there's a policy behind it by the government of India centrally. Okay, we've got amount of our 15 FDI minutes to go. This. We've also got Ajay Sriram, the president of CII and also Vikram Kirloska joining us, uh, Vice Chairman Toyota Kirloska Motor Private Limited. Thank you very much. Mr. Sriram, okay. to you first. Uh, now that just a few minutes are to go from this budget, now that all the expectations are out there, do you think that this one budget policy announcement uh, can actually signal the revival of investor sentiment where all of you go back at the end of the day and say, okay, we're enthused about the India story once more? Absolutely. How is I that? Th I think the government has to lay down the foundation and a direction 
of what they want to do in the next one year, two years, three years. I would prefer that they give a little medium and long term process and plan rather than trying to make short term freebies. I think the country needs today a vision for growth, a vision for jobs, a vision for manufacturing, vision for agriculture uh, activity stability and I think some of the negatives which have impacted investments and sentiments over the last couple of years like retrospective tax or tax terrorism as they put in their own uh, manifesto I think some of these need to be addressed and I mean you know a couple of things which can actually help industry growth and the government revenue because that's very important with growth is going to be revenue growth for the government the tax inflows go up is GST GST will actually bring in a lot of business activity onto the books and I think that itself is a kicker. Today the, we estimate in CII that GST will give a kick of one and a half to two percent of GDP. But I think these sort of directions set But Mr. Killers, can I don't want something short before you came in yeah. that given how the previous government turned away foreign investors, that just the policy announcements by themselves will not lead to a change in sentiment. It's not as if companies have decided, oh, this is too, too messy a country to be investing in, will change their minds and revive their investment plan just because you've got a new government. Do you actually see just the uh, presence of a Modi government change that? Well, I've seen in the last two weeks, you know, we had various issues in the automotive industry regarding excise duty and continuation, and they acted on it very, very fast. So I see some amount of speed in acting on requests. I'm looking forward to less bureaucracy and less red tapeism. That's what will help people come in. Ease of doing business will really help uh, no, people come in. But that's as far in. as Indian investors it, are concerned. It, no, I think, I think for any investor, whether Indian it's a foreign investor or Indian, Indian, Indian investor. But foreign investors want transparency. Money, want money, has, business. money doesn't have any color. It doesn't matter. Whoever puts in money, it's his hard-earned money. And I think it's important that we treat every investor with the same amount of respect across the board. You know, we have to give everyone transparency. Why only foreign investor transparency? We need to give transparency to everyone. Uh, and that's, I think that's a very, very key issue. Second key issue which I feel is on manufacturing. And the auto industry is a key part of a manufacturing unit. But we talk about growth and manufacturing. I keep thinking of how can we make this factory India as opposed to just market India. And there are three key issues to being competitive, you know, three key points of competitiveness cost, quality, and delivery. And in each of these, individual companies, of course, work on these issues to make themselves competitive. But what can a country do to make each of these areas like country competitive? What are the cost areas where we can be country okay. competitive? What are the uh, delivery areas, like infrastructure areas, which gives us direct competitiveness? What are the areas in terms of quality, skill training, etc.? So I think, I think these can be a little categorized and some push towards this, some policy direction towards this will really help a lot in trying to promote factory India. Okay, thank you to the both of you for joining us this morning thank with your initial thoughts. We'll of course have you back after the budget for comments and whether or not your expectations have been fulfilled. I want to go across at this time live to Fiki. Joining us from there is my colleague Gaurav Savant. He's got the head of HSBC India, Nainanal Kidwai with him. Gaurav, take it away. What does Ms. Kidwai expect uh, from Arun Jetli's first budget? The economic survey paints a grim picture. Now, with a monsoon which is delayed, a drought expected and unbridled inflation will the situation only worsen with me is nenalal kidwai former chief of fiki and of hsbc uh, nenalal kidwai what will the finance minister say or what can the finance minister say to bring in a chedin well i think what many of us are looking for is uh, the direction that uh, this government will take in terms of job creation and growth and the two obviously go hand in hand Specific sectors which create high employment are tourism, where for every million dollars that would be invested, you could see 47 uh, and a half uh, uh, million jobs created. Or indeed in agriculture, where you could see maybe 44 million jobs created. And indirect jobs as well, in the case of tourism, double what you would see in terms of direct jobs. So it is these sort of sectors where job creation becomes uh, clearly a focus and sectors which I hope we will see uh, some uh, statements on in the budget. For the individual, I think it is hard to expect any specific tax ops 
we have a very poor fiscal deficit situation which really straps the hands of uh, the finance minister and makes it very difficult for any tax concessions okay. to come through in a major way. There may be some tinkering at the margin on ATC because I do think we need to give savings and investments at a retail level a push and I'm sure there will be an aggressive disinvestment uh, calendar which uh, will be announced uh, in the budget. You will DPSU. Cut subsidies, find ways of boosting jobs. That's what Naina Lal Kidwai expects of Mr. Bhargav. Have we built up unreal, ex unreal expectations around this budget? Everybody almost is thinking yeah, think that's that Jaitley is some sort of a piece of our I think people expect that you announce a budget and everything will change. It doesn't happen. What we need when we are talking of growing jobs and manufacturing is that people must find that if they manufacture in India then their goods made in India must be competitive with what they can make in other parts of the world otherwise why should they make somewhere where their products are not going to be competitive and I'm sorry to say all these years the government has never focused on the aspect of competitiveness we have all focused I've improved, it was like this, I've improved so much. We provided this facility, we provided this concession. But are you competitive with the rest of the world? That is not happening. My suggestion is the budget must focus and say that we are going to make all steps necessary to make industry competitive. After that, whether investment comes in or not, will be a function of how you implement that intention of making industry competitive all across the board because there are hundreds of things that you have to do to make no, But what about time frame, Mr. Gupta? It's given the time. fact that some of it's these things... It's not going to happen. Sound. I don't believe that's it can be done in less than two years. That's what I'm saying. You can suggest it should be done ready. and lay out a road map how much time will it take. I'm sorry, you had a conflict with the commission for the last three years. That's why not the commission. It will be a statement of intent. Uh, policy fact, is not there. I am not saying, even saying that the budget should be libertarian. In fact, I am saying this. What is policy? We have a statement of political economy that comes out, a vision that comes out should be libertarian. And also, you know, it will be a great budget if it de demystifies future budgets. I think just the sex appeal of the budget day has to be taken away. For India to that's not good. We have this fancy studio. <laughs> if it goes away, <laughs> then there will be no I, I, excitement. There will be fancy studios every day celebrating growth and, uh, and, 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 and the rise, rise yeah. of India's economy. There are three things that I want to say. First, Shekhar's expectation that this government will come out with a clear statement that it's libertarian and not socialist or not utilitarian, it's not going to come. But what is going to change is Dr. <coughs> Manmohan Singh, a fine okay. economist, our former Prime Minister, yes. to say, reform by stealth. This government must change that reform by stealth. <coughs> it must come out openly and they say, say we are doing They're this. They're saying, have the courage to bite the bullet. Bite and the don't bullet and try say, to bring it in.